So let's dive on to the Las Vegas Raiders. And this is a team that Chris has wanted to cheer for, especially when Blackjack Del Rio was there when they announced they were moving. And, of course, they bring in uh, Chucky himself. And, and Chris can't really get down with that. So yeah. it, the, the drafts for the Raiders have been a little strange. Uh, according to all these different sites, the aggregated needs for them is tackle, safety, cornerback, linebacker, wide receiver. They went 8-8 eight and eight last year. What they ended up doing is first round, they take tackle Alex Leatherwood out of Alabama. Uh, second round, safety Trevon Morig out of TCU. Edge rusher in the third round, Malcolm Kuntz out of Buffalo. Uh, Divine Diablo out of Virginia Tech, a safety. Another safety in the fourth round, Tyree Gibson, sorry, Tyree Gillespie out of Missouri. Quarterback Nate Hobbs out of Illinois. Center Jimmy Morrissey out of Pittsburgh in the seventh round, taking a flyer on him. I, I'm, I don't hate it. I think if yeah. you had switched around the first round pick and the second round pick, which everybody has said thus far, exactly. I think it would be just fine. If you had taken Morrig at 17 and uh, Leatherwood at 43, that's about where both of them are. The issue is you you put a whole lot into a player that everybody thought. I mean, the over-under as far as Vegas draft odds was 46 and a half for Alex Leatherwood. And nobody saw him going top 20. And yeah. and yet they they saw him. They knew that they wanted him. They didn't want to risk it. And I, I get it because that was one of their biggest needs. I, they did need to shore up the offensive line. But there were a ton of other needs as well. They took three safeties in this draft. I don't I don't hate what they're doing, but I think that there were more efficient ways of going about it. Uh, Kyle, what, what do you think here? Yeah, and I'm sorry I just jumped in second. I mean, it's Chris's show for Christ's sake, and no, no, I just no, jump good. in here yeah, and just, you know, away, bull brother. rush away. Come on. <laughs> bull rush away, but... No, no, no. Uh, I completely agree. Now, look, I do think they address some needs, and you're 100% right. If they would have taken Morgan in the first round and Leatherwood in the second round, we'd all be saying, hey, good job by the – surprisingly good job by the Raiders because they're always morons in the draft. I mean, this goes back since I can remember. Like, like the, Darius Hayward Bay really stands out. I remember them taking him over Michael Crabtree. I'm like, what the hell? And it's an Al Davis thing to do. But they did address some needs. Uh, I would say out of this division, I think this was the worst draft of all the teams in the division. It might be the worst draft of the two divisions we're going to talk about today. I know the Seattle so, and Arizona ones so are a little bit. <laughs> I'm so for, uh, of my 49ers, I know. And we'll talk about my 49ers because I'm a little bit perturbed at them. But they did do some things there. It's strange. The Raiders are always going to be strange. But there's no doubt about it. They need it. Here's the thing I don't like. You're just going to blow up your offensive line. We just talked about this with uh, the secondary of uh, who the hell were we talking about yesterday? And they did the same exact damn thing, the Titans. They get rid of all their corners, yeah. and they want to try to draft these young guys to replace it. And that's what the Raiders did. So you get rid of Hudson, you get rid of Trent Brown, who I know wasn't healthy and had COVID stuff, but still Trent Brown and Alex Leatherwood. I mean, the, uh, <laughs> the amount of space between those two yes. is quite significant. Uh, I say it's pretty average, probably the worst draft in the division. I do like the second-round pick. I think Morg's a great pick for them, and they desperately need – secondary help but if you're going to draft a guy who wasn't going to be drafted till mid second round in the first round why not just trade the hell out of it and get some assets get a wide receiver you need a wide receiver i mean you already have an abysmal quarterback in Derek carr it's just an absolute can at quarterback he's one of my least favorite quarterbacks is he ever that in the bad? history of the league i'm not trying to defend him i just it, we we all and i i'm guilty of it as well is Derek carr really that bad Yes, he is that bad. He's terrible. You're never going to win anything with Derek Carr, and he's never going to make the big play that puts you over the top. He's never going to have that game against a good team that you need to win. He won't win it. I mean, you saw it last year. They started out good, like, oh, the Raiders might be this seventh uh, playoff team here. No, they fell apart because when it matters yeah. most, Derek Carr falls apart. He always has. He always will. I'm not a big Raiders guy, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> so I, I do think that they just – they missed, the, they missed the mark on your first-round pick, and when you do that, it's hard to give you a good grade. So I say they have the worst draft in the division. Wasn't overall terrible. I do like a couple of those safeties. I even like the kid in the third round out of Virginia Tech. Those guys are going to play a ton of snaps for the Raiders because their secondary is so bad. So they did address some needs. Just don't necessarily love how they went about doing it. Yeah, I don't really understand why they took so many safeties. Like, yeah. they had a need, but this is not one of those things where, okay, we need a tackle. Well, let's take four left tackles. Well, hang on. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't I don't understand <laughs> it. Or, or if, you, if you had a need at quarterback, you wouldn't take four quarterbacks. You don't play yeah. two safeties on the field at the same time. 
right? No, yeah. there's not a single defense that's designed that way. I don't know that well, any of these guys are strong enough or fast enough to play cornerback. I mean, you, you do play two safeties. One -on -one. You, you just don't play three safeties at a time. Like, I, I, I don't it, think it's... It sort of reminds me, remember when Washington needed a quarterback uh, in the late 90s, to, they, when they or mid-90s, they drafted Heath Schuler and Gus Farratt, and then... Yep. Of course, to my dismay, especially for my baseball card collection, because I went all in on Heath Schuler, and that was the wrong decision. <laughs> Gus Farad ended up being the uh, better player. But it is kind of weird. We're like, we need a quarterback. We'll take two. It is a little bit weird to take three safeties in the first four I rounds. Mean, the, right? the, yeah. Washington I did this. Understand, you know, I don't think their offensive line's better if you trade Leatherwood for Brown. Um, it, 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 Trent Brown did did exactly what players do all the time. They they perform overperform what they really are capable of in new England. They go and they get a, just a shitload of money poured all over them. And then they come back down to earth. And then when they get released by their other team or disappointed by their other team, they just crawl back to new England and take a, you know, a cheese sandwich and he's going to go back to being a pro bowler again. Um, it, I, Part of this is just a lack of trust in John Gruden to draft. Well, his, his last two drafts, he's had since he's been there have not been well at all they, yeah. they, uh, he's he's drafted far more bust than good and and i just don't this is the thing where i didn't like what the colts did the other day right but i trust their front office so i just assume i'm wrong on a lot of these guys okay i work under the assumption that half of these guys are going to be bust and not be in the league and it's all the top tier guys okay i don't want it to be i i i, I like more a lot and and I think he could be good, but I just work under the assumption that no, you've you've been touched by Gruden, which means you're probably not very good. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are probably right about that. Uh Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.